The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Uh, our guest today will be Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. Tomorrow it will be uh, Adrian Togare of Trading on Target. Uh, Tim Bost will be uh, with us later uh, in the month. Now, I do want to bring up the charts of the, uh, the first one, of course, is the FTSE, as you can see, that's been up at this high level for quite a while. Evidently, uh, Mr. Johnson has made it through his first... Uh, sequence of votes or however that works over there and then I've also posted the chart of the German DAX as you can see this one is in a decided downtrend uh, things are not as good in Germany as they are in England I guess but you can see this thing has been in a lower thing we just made an ABCD uh, pattern here uh, today now I want to I've got a sequence of charts that I want to cover today uh, before Jeff gets on one of them comes from uh, our friend Andy Pancholi over in the UK. It's about the cycles that are related to um, uh, disease and stuff. And I wanted to bring this up so you can see it, that there is a 100-year cycle here. That This is posted in the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. And as you can see, it's been pretty accurate uh, almost to the year. And, of course, you can see where, where COVID came in. So whether we have to wait another 100 years, I doubt it, because there's also cycles of viruses that uh, appear uh, that are in there also. But these have nothing to do with investment, po folks. I just bring them to your attention for a general overall stuff. I, I basically do a few little simple things that, worth, that work relatively well, and that's uh, what I try to do. I wanted to share this really nice chart here from our good friend J.C. Parrots of All Star Charts. We'll get this up here so you can take a quick look at it in here, and we'll get this up. This happens to be the relationship between the Dow Jones uh, Transportations and the Dow Jones Industrials. This was the work that Richard Russell used to do many years ago when they had the Dow Theory. Uh, of course, Dow Theory was the king of the hill at that time. But you can see here, we've been in lower tops here for quite a while. And for a long period of consolidation, you can see the same thing with the uh, transportations. So um, whether this is rolling over or not, I don't know. The one thing I do know with a pretty good degree of certainty is that low that we made on the 20th of May is extremely, extremely important. What I want to go through now is what happened yesterday because I, which we were talking about this market yesterday and I wanted to uh, bring to your attention you know, what we were looking at when we were watching it. So if you'll give me a second here, I'll get it up here and you'll be able to take a look at it because we're going to follow through today to see how accurate it was for today. Now, here is the E-mini S&P for yesterday. You'll notice that the low that we made here was a 78% retracement. The high that we made here was a 78% retracement. Folks, we were, on the, we were on live yesterday when we made that 78% retracement. I pointed it out. Not that it meant very much. I didn't say sell. I didn't say buy. I just pointed it out. That's all I wanted you to do was to see it. But what I did point out was to watch just in case – you know, something would happen that we watch all the time, which is nothing more than that strong trending market and the 382 retracement. And if you put this up here, you'll be able to see that's what we posted yesterday. And you'll notice that that was the high for the intermediate day up there at the 4144. We went all the way down, you know, quite a bit lower. And that's what I wanted to do was to go through the sequence of events of how these things actually work. Now, remember, when you're trading the S&P uh, 500, folks, you're trading some. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. You're trading something that has a uh, margin requirement of uh, just about. Hold on one second. We'll get this up here so you can see it. It's around twelve thousand five hundred, and you're controlling about two hundred thousand dollars worth of stock for that, as I recall. <clears throat> Bring this up here to see it. So you can see now the multiple A B C D patterns over the last few days. That's what we're looking for. Now with the and you can see the little one in between here. You see the smaller one comes in right where the low is. 
There's one right below it, but there's a whole bunch of patterns coming in here. So you want to be expecting a possible rally because if the market can go up to the 78% retracement and stop and come down to the 78% retracement and stop, why can't it make the ABCD pattern? Well, folks, the reason why I do what I do started back in 1976 when I went to work for Drexel Burnham. I knew at that time that I could beat the market. Could I beat it all the time? Most of the time, yeah, I can. And I did really well for those years I was with Drexel. And then, okay, since then. But anyway, I knew at that time I would be able to do it. Stop and think of this, folks. If you had a $100,000 account, which is not a not a large account anymore, but it's, if you had a $100,000 account and you averaged $394 a day on a $100,000 account, folks, that's $100,000 a year. Now, you're not going to be right uh, all the time. Let's say you're only right 60% of the time. So that means on a $100,000 account, you're going to make $62,000. Now, this is short-term trading. I realize that, but I believe that it can be done, and I know that it can be done because I've seen it done, and I'm watching it being done. So it can be done. You just have to learn how to do it and practice it a little bit. But these numbers, you know, they're not, they're not, very, uh, they're not hidden from anybody. They're right there in front of you. Now, after you've had a big move down like this, like we've just occurred right here, we should be looking for something that would give us some type of a rally, okay? So guess what happened today, boys and girls? You're going to find this really hard to believe, but here comes the old 61% retracement again here. I don't know where it is now, but there's where we were today. We went right up to the 61% retracement. Boom, and look how quickly we did it, folks. We almost matched what we did here in a day and a half. We did that in a matter of an hour or two. So this is the real key here. If this can hold this level and go higher, it's got a really good chance. And it has a good chance because this is a major, major two-day move here. So it's got a chance to go a lot higher. See, I couldn't sell the 61% retracement on this, even though I was watching the, listening to the beepers go off as it occurred, because the strength of that trend tells me danger, just like we had right over here. You see this day right here? That's danger when you see something like that. So you got to be really, really careful because the two things that patterns fail on are gaps and wide-ranging, strong-trending markets. And that's exactly what we've got here with the S&P uh, today. So those are a couple of things that I wanted to bring to your attention. And the reason why is Tom O'Brien is going to be giving his show here on Friday. There's only three more days to uh, subscribe. Tom knows these ABCD patterns and stocks and commodities like the back of his hand. If you want to see how the master and the book writer of uh, Timing the Trade Go watch that seminar. It'll be worth every penny of it, and I think you'll enjoy it, you know, very, very much. It's uh, it, it's going to be very exciting for you, uh, no matter uh, what's going on. Now, I have to share one other that is really, really super, super important here, and that is the same thing that we're looking at here in this E-mini. Boy, this time goes fast, doesn't it? Shut the front door and raise the rent. Okay, now here it is over the, you can see our low that we made back here on the 20th. You see that was the big low right here. There's the first ABCD and we went through that like it didn't even exist. You see that? Look at this. This is the key level, folks. 4060 in the spoo. Watch it. It means a lot. 382, 877-927-6648. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. I'm going to shift gears here for a second and move over to the bond market because uh, we finally found some support here in bonds. As you can see here, over the last two days, Monday and Tuesday, we've made a 78% retracement of the low that we made back in here. You can see the beautiful ABCD pattern just going right up to the exact 382. And then the gift that keeps on giving, it just keeps dropping and dropping. But we are seeing signs, you know, no market goes straight up or straight down. And this one's been down for quite a while. So we're due for some type of a rally. Remember, the long-term 382 of this bond chart that we're looking at here comes in at 144. And we're looking at 138 today, so or 137 today. So uh, that could, you could see a seven-point rally in bonds, and it'd still be uh, incredibly very, very bearish. So let's remind ourselves of that. Now, the next one that I wanted to talk to you about, I think, is pretty important. And it's the reason why I put out these videos, folks. This is a, a chart of the uh, crude oil uh, related to the uh, gasoline contract. And gasoline, of course, is in the news because we're approaching uh, $5 a gallon. And uh, we want to be able to try to find uh, if there is a possibility that maybe this market could be getting a little bit overbought. And as you can see here, you know, we're trading at the 78% level here in the crude oil up around the 120 level, whereas the natural or the gasoline has gone way above the old high. And we're up around 430, I believe. Now, 454 in the natural gas, in the gasoline contract, that is going to be a considerably important number to look at. The main reason is it's a 1.618 expansion. Now, what I try to do, and I do this in the videos, I do it here at TFNN on my radio show. I don't do anything, anything fancy. I try to keep it as simple as possible. So what I do is I start watching the relationships of these contracts between the gasoline and the crude oil. So let's just look at it from yesterday because this is the same pattern that we've seen in gold and S&P and, and all the others. They're, they're, they're not any different because if you, if you gave someone a chart and took off the X and Y axis and they didn't know what the price or time was, they couldn't tell you what it was. Nobody can do that. I watched John Murphy prove that 
you know, and that's why I remember it. And that was back 25 years ago down in Dallas, Texas. By the way, folks, I've had some uh, setbacks uh, family-wise. I mean, not immediate family, but very dear friends. One of my very dear friends uh, passed away. Going to have to be attending a service here pretty soon. The uh, second one was a very dear friend of mine, my poker playing buddy, Dr. Larry Leslie. He's uh, not doing too well uh, with his health. And then my very, very dear friend, uh, one of my best trading buddies, had a heart attack. And he's doing well, but he's being monitored, and uh, he still wants to trade while he's on the heart attack. And I, <laughs> the doctor said, you must be, I won't use the word that starts with an F and ends in G, nuts. But uh, his wife finally took the cell phone away from him and turned off the computer. So he's, uh, he's watching soap operas, I guess. But he's doing okay. But he loves trading, and he does well at it, and that's what I'm looking at. Let's get back to the gasoline contract. This was the high that we made here on Sunday night. And all I mentioned was watch for the first ABCD pattern. Now, this is just a 15-minute chart. And as you can see, it makes a beautiful ABCD pattern right at the 50% retracement. And the market goes down and makes an ABCD pattern right down here. Now, if this is a bullish market, that's going to be a buy. Guess what, boys and girls? It was a buy. And away it goes to the upside because we're still heading above $5, getting ready to see $5 gasoline is, is what I believe. Because we're if at 434 right now. That's a very short jaunt. Uh, our gasoline here in Tucson has only gone up about six or seven cents in the past month. But, you know, the gasoline prices have gone up 30 cents. So something's not quite right with that picture. But that's just a very small sample size because other places have gone up even, uh, you know, greater, greater than that. So I, I think we've got to remember that this is uh, not about how much money you make, boys and girls. It's about how much money you don't lose. Now, just off the uh, beaten path here for just a minute. I had several people uh, talk about the fact that, that, that how I met Sarah and the chart of AIG and the three drive to a top pattern. They thought that was a really funny story that I made up. Folks, I did not make that up. It was a Northwest Airline, and we got off for the, on, the, on the lounge, and I showed her that chart. She got out of the stock. It went from $72 and three quarters. She got out of it at 72 and a quarter, I believe, and it went to 33 cents. And it split 20 for one, you know, and still not very much, you know, just uh, like some of these other stocks that have done some of that kind of stuff. Anyway, that, it was all true. <laughs> one thing my grandma told me, it's just like, you remember Dr. Pepper, folks? If you tell the truth at 10... You don't have to remember what you said at two or four, and that's the truth. I mean, really, you got to be able to try to do it. Sure, I BS with a whole bunch of people. Yeah, and I stretch the truth just a tiny bit, but I don't alter it very much, and I exaggerate terribly. You know, if I say seven, it's probably, you know, three or something like that. But when I get down to these charts, charts don't lie, folks. That's why they're so beautiful. you got two choices. They go up, they go down, they go sideways, and you can measure what they're doing, okay? Now, that you can't hide, and that's why I'm not a fundamentalist, because I don't believe any of the, the stuff that's out there. I really don't. I mean, I listen. I've watched it in wheat. I, you, you've been through all this. I don't have to give you that stuff. I, I just get away from it. You know, I know that the fundamental stories are great, and that's wonderful and everything, but that's not where my forte lies, folks. I know how to make a buck on these darn things, and and I'm good at it. And, I, and, and I'm, not a, I'm not embarrassed to say that I'm good at it because I worked 60 years to get here. You know, <laughs> but it can be done. It's just that you got to be able to do it and do it consistently. And are you going to have bad periods? Absolutely, you're going to have bad periods. But besides the bad periods, are going to come really, really good periods. You know that? So I see you're in here, BV. I hope you're feeling okay. You better be on your heart monitor. <laughs> One of our friends that's uh, just had some, uh, some mi well, not minor, but uh, he's going to be back. Oh, you better take more time off than that, Bubba. Okay, let's move on to uh, one of the questions that someone else had uh, about yesterday's show when I was uh, talking about the uh, the price of gold and where I thought the price of gold was going. And, you know, we, we talked about the 382 in this that came in at the uh, 1878 level. That was a 382 on the weekly. We broke 40 bucks, a little more than $40 to the downside. Still trading about $25, $30 lower. But as long as we don't get above 1878, folks, I think we're looking at 1698 to 1688 uh, in that gold contract. That's down $160. That's a lot. 
Uh, so let's keep a, a very, very close eye on that. It's going to be a really interesting one, you know, to pay uh, very, very close attention to. Uh, one of the other things that someone asked me about was the long-term projections that the Elliott Way people have uh, talked about for quite some time. I'll bring this up because I saved it because I thought it was a pretty good, uh, the way that things lined up. You can see that they all related to the pie that we look at. Uh, you can see these relationships that we had up here. I, I know he, the way he does accounting and stuff might be a little different, but the time sequences between the years of the Fibonacci numbers, you know, 13, 8, 21, all those lined up to come in right around January. And maybe that is the major high. I think that it is, and the market's telling me that it is. Let's stay tuned to Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights. He's always got great stuff. We'll be right back, boys and girls. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. .com. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights on the line. Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm well, Larry. Thanks for having me on the show today. Oh, it, uh, Jeff, it's a double pleasure for me because I get to see the charts before everybody else does, and I get to see them twice for you to describe <laughs> them. When I look over these nine charts that you have, I said, where does a guy get the time to do all this? And I know you have a lot of it on file and you keep it updated and stuff, but boy, you do a great quality of your work. I, I'm just uh, – and, you know, I've, I've been around the, the – the, well, this is my eight, seventh decade of doing this, so I've seen a lot of different stuff, and yours is as good as anything I've ever seen, Jeff. And I mean that sincerely. Well, it means a, means a whole lot coming from you, Larry, that's for yeah. sure. 
Well, uh, I know you have a very strong competition in Saint Smolly and the Wolf Trader, but between the two of you guys, boy, you don't miss a beat. Why don't you tell us what you're looking at as far as these bear market rallies? Because violence is their middle name. So what are you seeing here, Jeff? Well, you know, a lot of people are complaining that, uh, you know, we're up 10 percent off the May 20th low. Uh, you know, the S&P made its high on uh, June 2nd, but the E-mini actually made its high on May 30th. And we have not made another high since. And so, you know, I tell you that is a tell, in my opinion. And it just goes to tell you that um, this, this is just a classic bear market rally. If you look back yeah. to the 2000-2002 bear market, you know, the tech wreck, and then, of course, the great financial crisis in, in 08, 09, um, we saw myriad uh, bear market rallies, six in the tech wreck, five in the uh, great financial crisis, all of which were over 7%. Uh, and uh, many of which were over 20 percent. In fact, uh, I believe we had uh, three that exceeded 20 percent in the tech wreck, and uh, at least one came in above 20 percent uh, in the great financial crisis. And so it's, it's not unusual to get a double-digit uh, uh, bear market rally, but, um, you know, investors should not be concerned about missing it. Okay, they should be more concerned about using this as an opportunity to protect their capital. Well, that's really good to know for sure. Now, Jeff, the next question that you had up here that you've warned us about way back in late January, early February, about a possible major top formation in play, and that, that certainly looks like it's what's happening, isn't it? We, we see a major top formation. It's a classic pattern top of the head and shoulders variety. It has a weak right shoulder, which puts kind of a, um, a diagonally uh, uh, downward uh, slanted neckline, which when broken uh, actually counts to 3,500 on the S&P, which is an interesting level of support because it coincides with uh, not just the 50% retracement level, of the entire rally off the March uh, 2020 lows, but also the 200-week moving average, which is a major magnet for uh, these sorts of, of down or drawdowns. And then we've also uh, been able to highlight two important weekly highs uh, that occurred back in August and November of 2020 that marked a sideways consolidation period of some note. And so I think the con uh, the coalescence of these three support regions together uh, gives me a lot of confidence that they will be tested, and I think in the very not-too-distant future. Well, our next one we're going to talk about. Oh, we have a, a, a personal uh, a question here, personal nature. You don't have to uh, answer it if you don't want to, but a gentleman from Waco, Texas is asking, how old are you? <laughs> I'm 57 years old. <laughs> okay, well, you're this still... for 32 years. But, oh, uh, you know, great. that, that oh. pales in comparison to your experience. <laughs> I have got nothing else to do. This is what I like to do. Anyway, I, I didn't think it was anything too personal. I said, I guess he's around 50 is what I said. So I missed it by almost one, one year from Fibonacci. So that's a good sign. Let's uh, talk about your wave count because you've had this pretty well figured out for quite a while. So what are you looking on in the Elliott wave? Well, I noticed that you put Robert Prechter's uh, chart up at the last uh, segment, and I would uh, – you know, I would definitely agree with his count that we put in a major top. The question is what degree of trend, okay? The major top on January 4th is definitely a cycle degree high, and that's what we've marked on the left-hand side. But we're also entertaining the idea that it's a potential super cycle degree high, and we count it as super cycle wave three. And so, you know, we're concerned that this decline is not just going to be your ordinary garden variety you know, a bear market, but it's going to be something much, much greater. We see a cycle degree correction uh, initially that should take us down to around 2250 before we get, you know, any substantially prolonged counter trend move uh, that could, you know, uh, be, be considered to be, you know, a, a larger degree, maybe cyclical bull market. So I, I think we've got a big downdraft ahead of us. And what we've done is we've kind of blown up this final up move uh, and the initial decline uh, on the right-hand side of this chart. And so we're looking at it more on an intermediate wave degree basis. You know, the, the move off the, um, the March 2020 low is primary wave five. Uh, and um, we think that primary wave five ended on January 4th. And now we're in the midst of, 
you know, primary wave A down uh, of an ABC corrective uh, 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 wave formation of at least cycle degree. And we're very early in the uh, in the process. We've got a one, two count followed by a one, two of three. There's five waves that will uh, complete three. So we've got three more waves to the downside. And that's going to be uh, pretty, um, I think, dramatic for a lot of people. I don't know that uh, uh, many are prepared for this. For what, from what I read in the newspapers and see on financial media uh, and, and Twitter, there just aren't very many people that are positioning themselves to protect their capital ahead of this. I agree with that. And now what you're seeing in the news with the cryptocurrencies, I mean, they're just look, looks like to me they're getting ready to have a, a circle of wagons over there because with the legislation. And I, I have friends that are in this uh, quite a bit in the currencies, uh, cryptos, and they're, this, these cryptocurrency exchanges now are charging uh, fees that if you're not active. In other words, if you don't trade, they're still going to charge you something. I mean, I, uh, and that's not a good sign either. So I don't know uh, much I think about it's over stuff. for crypto, and uh, yeah. you know we would advocate a short position in Coinbase. Okay, yeah, well that's that, that thing. That, that thing's been hit pretty hard for for quite a while. That's for sure. Okay, you still now, go to zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, zero is hey. I've been to zero. I watched that uh, Telemundo or whatever that thing was that uh, tele Telegraph Telewoman, whatever that thing was, went from uh, two point five million dollars to thirty uh, two dollars and thirty five cents in two days. That's what we call a bear market. <laughs> I can, I can't imagine someone. What their feelings was like, Jeff, to have two point five million dollars on Monday and on Wednesday have two dollars and thirty five cents. I mean, I've had some bad bad days in my time, but that is just, uh, ooh, that's a that's a real scary one in my opinion. So <laughs> I, I hope I never have a stop to loss, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I I remember in nineteen ninety, I had all of my uh, all of my retirement money. During the years I was in Drexel from 76 to 82, I put all of my uh, bonus money uh, into, into the Drexel stock because they said, hey, this is a no-brainer. And gosh, it was. I mean, it really, it really made a lot of money. But I had everything in there. And then when I retired, well, when I went to work on the floor, I don't want to take your time. Forget this. Let's talk about your next one right here, my friend. Uh, that you're looking at. This is the shorter term one, I, which I really enjoy uh, looking at this. You want to tell the folks what you're looking at here? Yeah, so we're just trying to um, identify what the short-term wave options are for this swing high. And I think it's one of two choices. We've got a 50-50 here. We either made the high or or we've got one more slight move higher to around 42.50 or so, uh, maybe 42.33. And so, you know, I think that will mark the high at the very, uh, uh, you know, least. Hey, stay with us, Jeff. we got a little more segment to go. Thank you. We'll be right back with Jeff Huge Alpha Insights, folks. Hey. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. And Jeff, we have a question from one of our listeners. And what is the smallest time frame that you look at when you're watching your Elliott wave swings? I mean, I, I look at an hourly chart, but I don't publish on anything, uh, you know, shorter than four hours. Okay, good. That's that's the question that he wanted to be answered, and it's great. Let's take a look at the S and P 500 internals. That certainly doesn't look very good. No, they're they're not healthy, uh, Larry. And let me just say that we have seen a nice recovery off the you know from the depth of despair, of course, with uh, prices since uh, May twentieth. But you know, the five week moving average of the percentage of net advancers, you know, while positive, continues to hold below kind of that November March uh, level of highs there. And uh, momentum, as measured by the five week RSI oscillator, that's below the median line. We're in kind of a bearish regime there. And we did mm -hmm. not post a positive divergence, which would normally accompany a more sustained rally. I'd also point out that up volume was only 15 percent of total volume last week. That said, wow. the five-week moving average of the up-down volume ratio has actually expanded up to around 4.75. But that would typically be the case right before the market tops. And we've seen that in the past where we've seen these big spikes up in that uh, up down volume ratio and it kind of marks the top so you know we're concerned that uh we're putting in a short-term swing high here in this bear market rally and things are getting ready to careen lower and we got a big number coming out on friday the cpi report and uh mm -hmm. you know a lot of people are looking for the number to normalize they're looking for things to come in much cooler than we've seen uh and i'm a little bit suspect on that because the ppi number has been 11% or higher for the last couple of reports. And that usually takes four to eight weeks to filter down into the CPI. And so um, for my money, I would say that we're going to have a pretty hot CPI number. Mm -hmm. you, you don't, in other words, you're of the camp that you don't think this is transitory, that this is going to be here for quite a while, the inflation that we're looking at. Inflation's uh, persistent. Yeah. It's really tough to put yeah. the genie back in the bottle. The Fed's tried and tried and tried and failed. It took Volcker mm -hmm. to take extreme action. And all we've heard is extreme talk so far. We haven't seen any action. We're you know under 100 basis points at the yeah. midpoint on the Fed funds rate right now. And the talk is that maybe that could double over the next two uh, meetings, the first of which will be the 15th of June. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens here. I don't know that the Fed has the guts to deal with this, but we'll find out what they're made of soon enough. <laughs> I'm, afraid, I'm afraid they wake up in the morning wondering whether they have the courage to do some of these things because they pump this thing uh, and they have nobody to blame but themselves, uh, plus everybody else True. that was involved. So anyway, let's take a look at your uh, investor sentiment. It's still quite pessimistic, I guess. It is. And, you know, every now and then investors get it right. Uh, usually when things are really, really bad. Um, some people think that when you see this level of fear and pessimism out there, it's a sign to buy. And it usually is at the bottom. 
But in each one of those bear market uh, uh, rallies that we <sighs> illustrated earlier, uh, pessimism was equally low, or, or I should say equally high. In other words, there was a lot of fear in the market, and all we got out of it was a bear market rally that took the market eventually much, much lower. And so yeah. I would be skeptical of looking at um, – you know, investor sentiment data as a reason to get long stocks here. I think that this will be persistently pessimistic uh, until we get to a point where uh, the market has re-rated earnings and earnings are still too high. Estimates are way too high. I don't think we'll come anywhere near the estimates that are out there. Well, you can see what happened to Target today. I don't follow this stuff. But the first thing I do in the morning is to check the CNBC and when all I make sure there's not been an assassination or a devaluation when they showed me what happened to Target. I, I didn't realize it had dropped that much. I mean, that, that's a huge drop in that stock. It really and is. A, uh, and it's just a, a well-run company, company normally, but this was clearly a management there. Yeah. step. Yeah, I, I love it. I think it's really great. Now, I wanted to, uh, the next one we're going to look at is the value, because, you know, I don't do anything in that area, but you certainly do. Do you want to tell the folks, you know, how people gauge value with some of these things? I mean, because sure. you stop and think of the stock is worth $2.5 million on Monday, and Wednesday it's worth $2.50. <laughs> that, that's a value reduction, I would think. <laughs> Right. I, I, so I feel we're sorry really for looking that. at uh, the value index versus the growth index. So you take the S and P 500 and and shave out the growth companies. There's about oh roughly 53 of them that uh, approximate that uh, pure growth average. And then uh, there's about 132 stocks that approximate the uh, pure value average. And we're just creating a ratio of the two value over growth, and it had been declining pretty steadily for 15 years, but we put in a double bottom over the last couple of years, and we broke out in uh, early December of last year and have really just taken off. And what I noticed is that there's a very tight correlation of about 90% between 10-year bond yields and the value over growth ratio outperforming, and if that correlation holds, We've just seen another big uptick in rates back above 3% here again. And my suspicion is we're going to see a quick catch-up where value outperforms growth dramatically over the next weeks to months. And, um, you know, it should, should move uh, substantially higher. And so, you know, we think if there's anywhere to hide in this market, it's being long value stocks and short growth stocks. Wow. Yeah, this is really, uh, gosh, your charts are just spectacular. Jeff, I look at these and I, that when you look at them, you just explain so much. I mean, just looking at what you're doing. I, hey, by the way, I don't work for Jeff, folks. He's just my guest. <laughs> you're, just very, you're, just, you're just very good. You're just very good at what you do, my young friend. So let's take a look here at the next one, which is a very colorful one. Looks like CNBC's popped up on the list here. This is uh, the sector leadership. So what are you seeing here? Well, if you've missed energy, then you've missed anything in the market that could be considered profitable. Everything is down. Last week's no different. Uh, you know, it just seems to be a rotation of what's going to perform worse from week to week. The only thing that has consistently avoided that is energy stocks, and we continue to advocate energy. And I think that mm -hmm. there's a really good opportunity in uh, the downstream area of, uh, of energy, and that would be like refining and marketing stocks. A few that come to mind are uh, Marathon Petroleum, Phillips 66, names mm -hmm. like that that are, are basically gasoline retailers. And they're benefiting from these big crack spreads that exist right now uh, because we're, we just don't have the capacity to refine in this country. And, uh, you know, there's, there's very, very tight distribution worldwide on refined product. And so, um, you know, the retail side of this business has, is experiencing very, very strong margins. And demand is very, very strong. And so you kind of got this double whammy in favor, high oil prices, high demand, and reduced refining capacity. Uh, that turn, translates into very, very high margins, very, very mm -hmm. strong profits. And that's where investors are, are looking to capitalize on that. Because if mm -hmm. you take a look at earnings revisions throughout the S&P 500, energy has seen revisions up 55% on a year-over-year -year basis, where the rest of the market is negative. So it's the only thing where earnings are going up is in energy, and refining and marketing is leading the charge there right now. Wow. Okay, Jeff, tell the folks how they can reach you. 
You can reach me on my website or on Twitter. It's www.jwhinvestment.com, or you can follow me on Twitter at alpha underscore insights. Larry, I just want to highlight with the shameless commercial here, we just published Huge Insights, The Big Picture. That's our free hey, monthly Jay, investment newsletter. Stay, stay with and us. And your stay subscribers are welcome to uh, subscribe to it on my website for free. Stay with us, Jeff. I Sharpening want you to go your into that skills more. as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Okay, we're back, folks. Jeff, are you still on the line? I am, yes. Good, good, good. Tell the folks what you have for them. It's a special report, and it's free. I mean, they love free, So, and if it's a special <laughs> report by you, it shouldn't be free. But go ahead, tell the folks what it is. Yeah, yeah go to my website, www.jwhinvestment.com, and right at the top in the middle, you'll see our newsletter. You click on that. You can go right to the newsletter. We publish this every single month. It's on the website. Uh, and you can subscribe and have it emailed directly to you uh, on the first of every month. It's absolutely free. Now, if you want more, if you want ideas, we got a, we got a, um, some feedback from a sub subscriber once who said, hey, Jeff, I love your research, but why don't you just tell me what stock to buy? And I'm like, okay, sure, um, I can do that. So, you know, we have a big institutional publication called Alpha Insights. And we go through that and we find our very best idea every single uh, week on Wednesday, midday. And we email that out. We call it our idea generator lab. And so we go through everything. And we say, this is the idea. It's a fat pitch. You know, Warren Buffett always mm -hmm. talks about, throw me a fat pitch and I'll take a swing at it. Well, we're looking for the <laughs> fattest pitch we can find. And we put it out there. And, and for 10 bucks a month, you can get, uh, you can become a member 
and you get four ideas a month. So you get my best idea every week for less than a cup of coffee costs at uh, Dunkin' Donuts, right? So wow. uh, we think it's a pretty good deal. And we've got, I don't know, <laughs> a lot of subscriber members to this. So uh, people like it. And uh, I think, you know, we make people a lot of money. And we actually report our performance. So you can oh, well, see exactly good. what our performance is. And it's totally transparent. And uh, you just give it a try. That's all I say. It doesn't cost you much. <laughs> hey, listen, thanks for joining us, my friend. We'll have you on again in a few weeks. And keep up the great work and live on the green side of the grass and live in your dream, buddy. You're on the right path. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Larry. You have a great one, you too. Bet. You bet. Jeff Huge, folks, Alpha Insights. We'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. Our guest will hopefully be Adrian Togare. So do something nice for your neighbor, folks. There's not everybody out there that's doing well. 